This is the first video for section 3.5 on error correcting codes. In this lecture, I'll be talking about something called parity checksums. So when we talk about transmitting data from one place to another, that's something that we do all the time. We communicate through each other using our cell phones, using social media. And the two main problems that occur when we send data is transmission errors, where the message that's received is not the same as the message that we sent. And then security, where somebody other than our intended recipient receives the message and reads it. We're going to focus on transmission errors in this section, and we'll talk about security problems in the next section. So here's some examples of transmission errors. So let's say we're trying to text our friend, and our friend receives the message, party tonight, bring, and then this thing right here, C-H-I-P-D. Well, we can detect an error. We can detect that something's wrong because that sequence of letters is not a word. So we know something went wrong. But we can correct the error because the word chips is pretty close to what we read, C-H-I-P-D, and so we figure, oh, well, that's probably what they meant, and we're able to correct that error. What if we get this message? Party tonight, bring sofa. Well, sofa is a word, but it doesn't really make sense in context, right? And maybe you're having a furniture party, but otherwise it's probably not very likely that you're telling your friend to bring a sofa to the party. So again, we're using sort of the context here to understand what's going wrong. And then the word soda is pretty close to the word sofa. So we think that's probably the most likely correction in this case. Well, let's look at this example. Party tonight, bring, and we see the sequence of letters S-E-D-R. Again, we detect the error. We tell that something is wrong because we know that that's not a word. But this one's a little harder to change, uh, harder to correct, because soda, S-O-D-A, that's two letters away, because if we change the E to an O, and we change the R to an A, that becomes soda. But the word beer is also two letters away. If we change the S to a B, and this D to an E, then this word becomes beer. So we're not entirely sure how to correct this error, because we're not 100% sure what our friend who sent us this message meant. So we'd need more information in order to be confident in how we would correct this error. So these give us some principles of error correction. An error can be detected when the message that we receive isn't in our dictionary of valid messages. And we can try to correct errors by finding valid messages that are close to the message that we receive. But as we've seen, this doesn't always work. Now, when we're talking about communicating between devices or between machines, machines communicate with each other using a language entirely made of zeros and ones, which we call binary. So any language where the only options for our characters are zero and one, we call that binary. But the same kind of errors that we talked about earlier, substitution errors, transposition errors, these kinds of things can occur when we're looking at digital signals, these binary signals. And we can use special techniques because we're limited to only zeros and ones, that actually turns out to be an advantage for us to be able to detect and correct these errors. So let's look at this example. So let's say we've got this Mars lander, the inside Mars lander, which landed in 2018. And we're NASA and we're trying to send signals to the Mars lander to get it to do various tasks. So we might want it to move its robotic arm, for example. Well, these signals are sent in binary. How many messages could we possibly get? Well, it depends on the length of the message. So let's say that the different commands that we send to the lander are each four digits long. So we can imagine that each of these sequences of zeros and ones represents a different command. So zero, zero, zero might be, you know, move the robotic arm up. One, zero, one, zero, zero could be take a picture with the camera, right? So there could be a lot of different things that we want this lander to do, and each of these might represent a different command that we want to send. And if we have four digits to play with, and each of those digits can be zero or one, that's going to give us 16 possible messages, which are all listed here. But when we get these vast distances between planets, we might send a message that could end up being different from the message that gets received. So here on Earth, we send the message 0110, which could be, for example, telling the lander to retract its robotic arm to avoid an incoming dust storm. But then over the vast distances, the millions and millions of miles between planets, the message the lander receives could be 0010. And so instead of moving its arm to protect itself from a dust storm, it ends up taking a picture or it ends up raising the arm even higher, which makes it even more dangerous, right? So this could be really disastrous. So what we want to try to do is allow the lander to be able to detect and maybe even correct possible errors in these messages that it's receiving. And one of the ways that we can do that is with check digits. Now, every digit of our message is either a zero or a one, which means the check digit also has to be zero or one. 
but that's not very many possibilities for that check digit. So as we'll see, one check digit will often not be enough, and so we may end up using several of them. Now, specifically for these binary messages, we use a special kind of, of check digit called a parity check sum. So that's sort of three parts of this phrase here, parity, check, and sum. So check, we kind of got that, right? That's a check digit. So it's gonna be a digit that's used to check our message. And then it's gonna be a di digit that's based on the sum of digits in our message, where we're gonna add up a bunch of the digits in our message and then use that to check something. We've seen that before too. A lot of the ID number systems that we talked about earlier in this unit involved adding up the digits in our message. Now this word parity, that's new. The parity of a sum is zero if the sum is even, and one if the sum is odd. Remember, the check digit can only be zero or one, right? We can't use fancy remainders or anything like that like we did before. We can only use a zero or a one. So that means we're gonna look at this sum that we're taking, this addition result. And if that result is even, we make our check digit be a zero. If that result is odd, we make that check digit be a one. And this really is a remainder. It's just a remainder when we divide by two. So a parity checksum is the parity of the sum of sum or all of the digits in our message. So that's what this phrase means. It's a check digit based on adding up some digits and looking at whether that total is even or odd. Okay, so for this example, we're just gonna use a single parity checksum digit. We're gonna add up all of the digits and then add that parity as a fifth digit to our message. So for example, let's look at this message right here, 0101. Zero, one. So we add up all those digits, zero plus one plus zero plus one is two. So the sum is two, two is even. So parity of even is a zero. So we add a zero to the end of that message. If I look at this one down here, zero, uh, one, 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 zero, I add up those, message, uh, those digits, one plus one plus one plus zero is three. Three is odd, so we add a one to the end of that message. So we're looking at the parity of our sum. Let's do a couple more. One, zero, one, one over here, I add one plus zero plus one plus one, the total is three. Three is odd. For the parity of an odd number, we get a one. So I add a one to the end of that message. Let's do one more. Let's do this one up here. Zero, 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 zero. Zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. The sum is zero. Zero is an even number, right? It might seem a little strange, right? But zero is actually an even number. And the parity of, of an even number is zero. So we add another, a fifth zero to the end of that message. So when we do that for all 16 of our messages, we now have a new dictionary of possible messages. We still have the same number of messages. We still have 16 messages, but now we have their five digits long. This fifth digit that we added is our check digit. And so when we have our dictionary of messages, we call these messages code words. We're gonna talk about that more in the next lecture. But now if we, the Mars lander receives the message, let's say 00100. So we can tell by using the same kind of checking process that we did before. If I add up these digits, zero plus zero plus one plus zero, that's one. One is odd. So the check digit should be a one, but it's not, it's a zero. The check digit should be a one, but it's not. And so the lander knows that this message is messed up. This message is not correct. And so whatever it might have thought to do, raise the arm, lower the arm, take a picture, whatever, it's not gonna do any of that stuff. It's gonna wait for further instructions. So, so far in this video, we've learned how to use checksum digits to add them to the end of our messages to allow us to detect transmission errors. The next time we're gonna use the idea of finding the closest possible message. That's something that we talked about at the beginning of this video. We're gonna use that same idea to try to find corrections for our messages.